Stevie from SD Gear with So Saves Me, and I have had so many questions over the past year, year and a half, on the Q foot. People are very confused on what the Q foot is, what it does. Uh, it's something you need. If you own a Kenmore, you need a Q foot. Go on the hunt, find one. They are amazing. If you work with knits, this is the foot for you. If you work with stretchy stuff, you ought to get a Q foot. And if you notice, I have a small assortment of Q foot right here. I have the low shank, which is, they're kind of hard to find. They're not as common. A super high shank, and I actually have a knit foot. This knit foot is not to be confused with a Q foot, so be warned. And then heads up, there is also other feet out there. There is the plastic satin foot, and there's plastic zigzag feet. They are not to be confused with a Q-foot either. See, there's another one. These are all super high shank. These are just clear, it's a, just a clear satin foot for so you can see your work and things like that. It is not a Q-foot. The easiest dead giveaway of a Q-foot is, A, it'll come in a fancy little box. Sometimes if you're real lucky, it'll come with Q-needles. Or, in a lot of cases, it'll have some little cues on it, and I'll take some pictures of it and show it to you later here and give you a good close-up of what these feet are. But let's learn on what they're good for, how to use them, and why you need one. I've already got my machine threaded. This is on my 1802, and I am assuming you know how to thread your machine. So, we're going to break out the cute foot here, and if you notice, this one has no needles. Uh, I generally, this is a ballpoint needle that's in the machine. I just use ballpoints. I'm not quite sure if the Q needle is something different from a ballpoint, if it's just an early version of the ballpoint, and Kenmore just called it a Q foot to match their Q foot. I, I don't know. There is some dead giveaways if you have a Q-foot, though. One, like I said, it might have some little cues on it, which you'll notice this Q-foot does, does not. However, if you can see it, and it's really tough to see, you will find that there's a patent number on it, too. That is another dead giveaway. They would have a patent pending or a patent number or a part number on this foot. Not all Kenmore sewing machines came with this foot, so it was an added piece that you had to buy. And the first thing we're going to do is I've got some 7 ounce cotton poly spandex stretchy stretchy stuff it's uh, I think it's 100 one way and 50 the other way I'm gonna put it in my machine here and I'm gonna show you how wonderful this foot is so I'm just gonna do a standard everyday straight stitch on this foot on this stuff and if you've ever worked with this stuff you'll know it is terrible to work with As you can see, it didn't pucker. It did perfect little straight stitches all the way through it, which is probably not the stitch you want to use on knit anyways, but it still has a little bit of stretch to it, surprisingly enough. Turn it around. Looks pretty good. Could use a, could increase the tension a little bit. So let's throw it back underneath there and just do a quick, uh, let's do a zigzag. Just a straight up, plain old zigzag. Smaller. And as you can see, I mean, this is just mind blowing on how easy that is. It's just, it's like sewing cottons. If you don't have one of these and you work with knits, you are, you are missing out. So let's grab a fresh piece and we'll do some more stuff here. Yeah, I got you in a little tighter. Now we're going to do some really, really horrible stuff. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of power mesh, but it's that sports mesh that's got holes in it. You can see straight through it. It is extremely stretchable. I mean, I think it's like 200, 200% both ways. So we're going to put some of that down on here. And then we're just going to zigzag it. I want a white zigzag though. In fact, let's do a stretch, that multi-point stretch zigzag. There we 
have it. Isn't that just wild? But I got you taped up underneath my machine, and you have to excuse the uh, noise because you are taped up against my machine. You can see exactly what's going on here. So let's do a multi-point zigzag. And I just want to stress that this is not cotton. This is that stretchy stuff. Look how nice that's coming out. Let's do a smock stitch. dandy. Straight stitch. Just a straight up old. Let me get it on. You can definitely tell this is definitely t-shirt type material. Just a plain Jane straight stitch. Oh, I'm still on zigzag. Well, we'll do a zigzag. Straight stitch. I'm telling you, if you, if you guys don't have one of these Q-feet, and a Kenmore 158 that'll work with it, you need one. We'll just look at the bottom of it. It looks identical to the top. And I twin needle with this stuff. This is why I don't have a cover stitch machine, because these work so good that I just I can't justify the money for a cover stitch. Just put a simple straight stitch in a single layer of this horrible stuff. I mean, it's not even bunching it up real heavy. It's pretty awesome. Out, I thought I would go ahead and let's demonstrate the low shank version. This is my Kenmore 1050. And if you like, you can leave a comment on the video on how much you would love to have one of these little mini 1050s. They're so cute, and it works so good. Go back to a straight stitch. And it, even, even the 1050s have the extra lift. Look at that. Look how much stuff you can put underneath that. So we got some of this terrible stuff. This stuff is terrible to work with. If you've never worked with Power Mesh before, you are not in for a treat. This stuff is terrible to work with. But if you have a cue foot, I got a little bit of bunching there. But you really don't want to ever straight stitch this. But if you got a cue foot, it does stitch it. That's the mind. That, that I mean, that's just crazy. Here, I'm going to loosen my tension up a little bit on the foot. Let's do... Uh, Let's do that multi-point zigzag or whatever that's called. Rick rack? I don't know. Maybe we'll do uh how about the elastic stitch? but that's all right. You get the idea. Q foot. 
amazing piece. You have to put it on your wish list. If you own a Kenmore 158 series that can use these feet, you need to put it on your wish list. It is a great thing to have, especially if you work with knits. I will tell you this, I didn't demonstrate it today, but I do use twin ball points and I use the Q-foot needle and it looks just like a cover stitch. It still stretches, it works really swell. You ought to get one of these, but be aware there is a low shank version of it. There is two flavors of the high shank. One of them has been patented and one of them was a patent pending. And then there's another one, if I remember right, that comes in a white box and it was for vertical bobbin Kenmore. So make sure you get the right one for your machine. There is differences in them. Uh, mine are just snap-in class 15 bobbins. They're not the drop-in, so it came with the standard Q-foot. There is one, I'm almost dead certain, it says horizontal. And that would be the ones for the drop-ins. That would go with um, the more modern Kenmores. I think like the 185 or 1985 or I, I don't know. There's a bunch of models out there. I'm not a fan of drop-in, so I don't own one, so I can't explain how, I can't even tell you if they work really good or not, but if they are anything like these, they work amazing, you should get one, and happy sewing!